Hello friends, welcome to my channel Botanical Studies. In this video, we will discuss about the lawn. Lawn. A lawn can be defined as the green carpet for a landscape. It is a basic feature for any type of garden. In a home garden, lawn improves the appearance of the house, enhances its beauty, increases convenience and usefulness, thus adding monetary value to the real estate. Lawn provides a perfect setting for a flower bed, a border, a shrubbery, or a specimen tree, or a shrub. Besides the material value, a lawn has its spiritual value too. A lawn is a source of charm and pride, and reduces tension of the mind after a day's hard work in a materialistic world. Lawn grasses. Let us discuss about some of the grasses which are useful as a lawn grasses. Cyanodon dactylon, commonly called as Hariali, Durwa or Bermuda grass. Texture of this grass is medium fine and it is suitable for open sunny location. It is an excellent lawn grass for sports field and golf courses. Stenatophrum secundatum, commonly called as St. Augustine grass, Buffalo grass, centipede grass, etc. The texture of grass is coarse. It is suitable for shady situations. Sporobolus tremuous, commonly called as chain grass or seashore grass. The texture of grass is fine. It is suitable for saline soils and open sunny locations. Poya annua, commonly called as annual blue grass, annual meadow grass. The texture of this grass is medium fine. It is suitable for acid soils, higher elevations. Zoysia japonica. It is commonly called as Zoysia grass, Japanese lawn grass, Korean lawn grass, etc. The texture of this grass is coarse. It is suitable for poor sandy soil, open sunny situations. Zoysia tenifolia, commonly called as Korean velvet grass, carpet grass, snake grass, etc. The texture of this grass is fine and it is suitable for open sunny situations. Zoysia matrella, commonly called as Manila grass, Korean grass, or Manila temple grass. The texture of this grass is medium and it is suitable for an open sunny situation. Festuca erundinacea, commonly known as fescue grass, tall fescue, etc. The texture of this grass is coarse and it is suitable for shade and survive on inferior soils. Paspalum vaginatum, commonly known as paspalum grass, seashore paspalum, biscuit grass, etc. The texture of this grass is medium. It is suitable for an open sunny situation. Establishment of lawns. The site. Site selection. It is not always possible to get best site that one would like to choose for the lawn. But a few points should be kept in mind before selecting a site. Soil. In India, the common lawn grass, Cyanodon dactylon, that is Dub or Bermuda grass, is very hardy and can be grown in any type of soil. But to obtain a most luxuriant lawn, it is desirable to have a fertile loamy soil containing enough humus. The soil should retain enough moisture and at the same time, the drainage should also be adequate. The ideal pH is 5.5 to 6. If the pH is very low, about half a kilogram of chalk or grounded limestone should be added per square meter area on a sandy soil or a similar quantity of slacked lime should be added to clay loam soil. In an alkaline soil, gypsum should be added at the same rate. At least a depth of 25 to 30 cm of good soil is required for obtaining a good lawn. Drainage. Grasses are shallow rooted herbs and therefore no drip drainage is necessary but no water should stagnant in the rooting zone. In clayey soils, some kind of drainage must be provided. This may be done by drainage pipes or by putting a layer of broken pieces of bricks and gravel 90 cm below the surface. Ordinary drainage work can be carried out in conjugation with grading or leveling. Digging. Rough surface leveling by eye estimation should be done prior to digging. After rough leveling is completed, the digging work should be taken up. Digging is done during hot months of April and May. During the process of digging, all stones, old masonry, grass roots, etc. should be removed. 
After the trenching is completed, the soil is left to dry in the scorching sun for a period of 7 to 15 days to kill the weeds or insect and for sterilization of the soil. The soil should be turned up subsequently 2 to 3 times at weekly intervals. Each time the clothes of earth, if any, are broken and the roots of weeds removed. Manuring and grading. When the digging is over, the soil is to be manured and graded, that is leveled. Farmyard manure or old stable manure is used for this purpose. The manure is sieved finely and spread over the surface at the rate of 500 kg per 100 square meter of soil. This is then worked up in the soil to a depth of 15 to 20 centimeter. The soil leveling is done with the help of leveling pegs and spirit levels. The soil is then irrigated and the soil levels checked. It is always advisable to keep the level of lawn 5 cm below the level of path and drives. The margin along the path are raised by gradual slopes of 50 to 20 cm to form a turf edge of 3 to 5 cm higher. This method will help keep the path dry when the lawn is flooded with water. It is not always necessary to have a perfect leveled lawn. Lawn can be laid in undulated land also and such lawns look very beautiful. But the slopes and the mounds in the lawn should be gradual and artistic, simulating the nature. Selection of grass. The most suitable grass for most part of India is the dub grass or Bermuda grass that is cyanidon dactylon. The grass thrives well under hot sunny weather. This grass will not grow under shade. Poya species is of a very fine texture and gives a soft carpet like filling when laid as a lawn. The color is blue green. This is suitable for higher altitudes with cooler climatic conditions or hill stations. Method of planting. If irrigation facilities exist, a lawn can be laid down any time during the year. Under Indian climatic conditions, it is better to sow after one or two monsoon showers while the grass roots is planted at the beginning of the monsoon. The different methods of starting a lawn are by seed sowing, dibbling, turfing and turf plastering. Method of planting of lawn from seeds. If grass cuttings or roots are not easily available, one should go for the seeds. It is important to secure good quality seeds free from weed seeds. Dub grass seeds is very light and fine and proper care should be taken during sowing. Prior to sowing, the surface when relatively dried up is scratched to a depth of 2.5 cm with the help of garden rake. The total area should then be divided into equal plots of 200 to 300 square meters to ensure even sowing of seeds. The sowing should be preferably undertaken on a windless day. The seed is divided at the rate of 500 gram per 200 square meter and mixed with double the quantity of finely sieved soil and broadcast by hand. After sowing is completed, the plot should be watered at regular intervals with a water can having a fine hose. The seed germinates in about 3 to 5 weeks from sowing. Dibbling. After the land is ready, well manured both unrooted and rooted dub grass cuttings is obtained from a closed cut lawn or nursery or from a lawn scrapping. The roots or grass thus obtained are dibbled that is planted in a ground when it is slightly moist at 7 to 10 cm apart. The soil is kept moist by frequent watering till the grass sprouts. The roots of dub grass sprout easily and the cuttings of offshoots roots readily under moist condition and within 5 to 7 weeks the grass will be ready for first cutting. By this method a lawn will be ready in about 4 months. Truffling The quickest method of developing a lawn is by truffling. Truff is a piece of earth of about 5 cm thickness with grass thickly grown over it. The pieces may be of small squares or in rolls, small weeds of about 30 cm or so. The turf must be free from weed and consist of the required lawn grass. These should be laid closely to each other in a bounded alternate pattern. 
like bricks in a wall. In the already prepared ground along the joints, sandy soil should be filled as packing. The grass is immediately watered copiously. By this method, a lawn will be ready for use in a very short time. Turf plastering. A paste is prepared by mixing garden soil, fresh cow dung and water. Bits of chopped up fresh root stem or rhizome of dew grass are mixed with this paste and the paste is spread evenly on the surface of prepared ground after moisturing the soil. The paste is then covered by spreading 2 cm of dry soil and watered at regular intervals. This method is not very suitable especially in dry and variable climate. Maintenance of lawn. Having raised a lawn, the question of maintenance comes next. If the lawn is not properly maintained, it will become useless within no time. The various aspects of maintenance are discussed below. Weeding. Weed is a common in both new and old lawns. Therefore, as soon as lawn is established, weeding sh should start and continue at regular intervals or whenever the weeds come out. The frequency of weeding obviously will be more during the rains than in the colder months. The nut grass that is Cypress rotundus is the most difficult weed to eradicate because of its deep root system. This should be removed with the roots as deep as possible with a long narrow bladed kurpi. All weeds should be removed with the roots and these should never be allowed to seed. Rolling, moving and sweeping. The object of rolling is to help the grass anchor itself securely and also to keep the surface level. Rolling should be avoided when the soil is wet. Moving is another important operation. The first thing is to obtain a good machine which will cut evenly at a correct height. The frequency of moving is determined by the amount of growth and will vary from season to season. But grass should not allow to grow more than 5 to 6 cm in length during any season. Sweeping Sweeping the lawn thoroughly after each moving is essential to clean the cut grasses which might have fallen from the mover box. Sweeping is also done every morning to clean the fallen leaves and other debris. Sweeping may have to be repeated two or three times in a day during the season when the deciduous trees shed their leaves. Irrigation Duke grass is shallow rooted and therefore frequent light irrigation is better than copious flooding after long intervals. Here again some people prefer flooding at long intervals as this saves labors, labors as well as water. If sprinkler irrigation is used, the frequency of irrigation varies with the climate. Stagnation of water should not be allowed as it may kill the grass. Scrapping and raking. Continuous rolling, treading and moving may result in the formation of hard crust and the lower part of the lawn may get matted and woody. For moving such lawns, the grass is scrapped at the ground level with the help of a khurpi. In the month of April and May, scrapping is followed by where the condition of lawn is good, hard and tough. Raking is done both ways to loosen the old runners the soil and to aerate the soil. Then the mower blade is lowered and the grass moved close to the ground. Top dressing with compost and fertilizer. After scrapping and raking, a compost consisting of good garden soil, coarse sand and leaf mold in the proportion of 1 as to 2 as to 1 is spread over the lawn to a depth of 3 to 5 cm. To cover to such a depth, a 100 kg of compost per 100 square meter will be needed. Bone meal is also applied at the rate of 1 kg per 10 square meters. The same compost is used as a top dressing again during September to October. From October to April, ammonium sulphate is applied once every month at the rate of 1 kg per 50 square meter area followed by watering. Problems in lawns Frost injury In cold regions, the grass is injured due to frost. This can be avoided to a great extent if the grass is spread with water every evening and in the early morning after frost. Thatching Formation of straw-like 
layers of dead stems, leaves and the roots of grass is called that thing. It can be controlled by manual removal. Yellowing. It is more prevalent in wet weather. It is controlled by drenching with copper oxychloride or diethane M45 at 3 gram per liter or bavistin 1 gram per liter. Earthworms. Earthworms affect lawn by depositing their excreta. Causes a circular ring of thin colored or dead grass. This can be controlled by drenching soil with bavistin at 1 gram per liter or diethane M45 at 3 gram per liter, oil cake of neem or pongamia at 500 gram per 10 meter square may be applied before rainy season. Termites, white grubs and funnel ants, they are controlled by application of forate or thimate. So this is all about